Coming up on UPH, where the flip is the PlayStation camera? The candy man can, cause he sprinkles it with love. And then the duck says, these puns quack me up. Musical chairs of the pooping variety. And more on this episode of Unbelievable Power Hour. There it is. <laughs> oh yeah! It is Zack Island. <laughs> Damn, I'm good! everyone and welcome to episode eight of unbelievable power hour i'm dan dehan what's up every people i'm hey. aaron wiesinger hey aaron wiesinger how are well, you pretty good yeah how, how was you? your uh how was your week it's uh it's getting better i uh, i'm not as sick as i once was you're not certainly Ill? not as sick as last last episode no i won't be blowing my nose and coughing well hopefully not A.K.A. Uh, ruining the show. <laughs> yeah, that's what we call it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. So this week, I continued to do a little desk warming. What is now, that? Do you know what? The, no, okay. So when you're teaching... <clears throat> oh, me. whoops. Show ruined. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're an English teacher in South Korea, specifically when you're at a public school, there are times... When kids go on vacation, and so do the teachers, and so does yeah. everybody else. Everybody needs a little sense. break every now and then. I can understand sure. that. Sure. Except for you. <laughs> like me specifically. I'm not even a yes. teacher, and I don't get a break. <laughs> Dan DeHaan is written out of that. <laughs> oh. Uh, there's a thing called desk warming, and it states that uh, since you're a contract teacher, you are required to go in pretty much every day unless you are using up part of your vacation time. Bogus. And this is called desk warming because you are keeping your desk warm for no good reason. Um, there's mostly, in my mind, good things about this because they're paying you to do nothing or whatever you want to do. And, and it's official. You can do whatever you want. I mean, they, they don't stop you. I mean, of course, there are limitations well, I know. I'm just, but i mean like they're not like you have to do lesson planning and all this no. jazz no oh, not okay. at all. so they what do you do stoked. uh i do a lot of drawing and um uh, yeah basically whatever i feel like get stuff ready for the podcast or yeah it's just kind of time to myself wow Very... that's nice do you do you listen <laughs> to enya during that time ah uh, i wish you would no no i, I don't I mean, the, the thing is, like, so many people really complain about it. Oh, it's so stupid. Why do we have to go? And we're not even doing anything. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, they're, they're paying you to sit there and do nothing. I mean, you could read, watch YouTube videos all day and then go home. Like, that's it. That's nice. That is yeah. nice. Yeah. Cool. So that's what I did. That sounds like a decent week. Yeah. And then well, uh, yesterday, I saw 12 Years a Slave. Oh, and uh, it's it's a it's pretty intense. It's a good movie, but it's really intense. Huh. Um, I'm not. I don't think I can pronounce the main actor's name right, but it's Chiwetel Ejiofor. <laughs> <laughs> good job. But he was the assassin from the movie Serenity. Oh, and you you love you some uh, Serenity. I you do. you love. You're in a bromance with Nate Fillion, I bet. <laughs> you, you say that like you don't love Serenity or Nate Fillion. So don't, don't uh, pull that. I <laughs> will say that I have not seen Serenity. I watched like three episodes of Firefly and I was like, Ew. Ugh. And I didn't. I don't think I want to do this show. With you. You're scowling. Huh. <laughs> yeah. So it was a it was a fun depressing time that you had watching this movie. 
yeah, it's super terrible the things that went on during that era. Yeah, but uh, it's a it's a good movie. I watched uh, Django Unchained, and that had a good flavor of uh, you know some of the terrible things that happened. Also, yeah, and, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for bringing that yeah. up. Yeah. Oh. What about you? What'd you do this week? Well, you know what? Last night, uh, I I went to a friend's house and we had board game night, and. Yes. I love to play board games, and I'm not talking about Monopoly or that Stupid. garbage. Mm. Uh, you know, or the game of life. How about yeah. no, the game of boring, <laughs> the game of death, the game I'm bored Agreed. bored to death. Agreed. So last night we played a game called Last Will, and these are you know they're they're a lot of them are called Euro Strategy, uh, that kind of stuff, and yeah. uh, they're not based on luck so much and i think that's why they call them that Mm -hmm. and uh we played a game called last will and and the game's kind of based on the plot from the movie brewster's millions i've never seen this movie but it's all about uh your uncle dies okay well this is the game not brewster's millions because i haven't seen it but i was just told that's the same thing so blah 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 whatever Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, your uncle dies and he will give his fortune to the nephew that that proves that he'll enjoy the fortune the most. Mm-hmm. So the object of the game is getting rid of all of your money and spending all of your money. Ooh. So you got to buy property, wine and dine people, live extravagantly for about seven rounds. And uh, <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. I really liked this board game. It was a lot of fun. I play a lot of them. I have a nice board game collection. And I won. It was a good time. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, if people out there like board games, check out Last Will because it's a good one. It's a little yeah. different because most of the games you're trying to save your money and get the most money end up, you know, manage your money the best. And this one is right. you're managing your money by trying to get rid of your money. Get rid That's of that. That's pretty junk. cool. I, yeah. uh, but you and I used to play a bunch of games. Yeah, we used to play uh, Race for the Galaxy. No, not Race. What's it? Yeah. Race, for the, Race for the Galaxy. Race for the Galaxy quite a bit. Yeah. So I really Amongst like Amongst many games. others. A yeah. lot. All right. All right, everybody, it's time for the weekly playlist. This is where we talk about the games that we played this week. And I've got a whopper for you. I, I played a really, really fun game that I like a lot. What is it? Well, it's the DLC for Last of Us, Left Behind, Ooh. starring mm-hmm. Kirk Cameron. It's all about nice. the rapture. Awesome. And everyone's, you know... Wait, I'm getting my my left behinds mixed up. I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Whoops. <I didn't> use... <laughs> the Christian uh, fiction novel. <laughs> yes, and movie. It became a film as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, The Last of Us was probably my favorite game of 2013. It was one that I beat pretty quickly. Uh, I'm, but not too quickly because. Mm-hmm. It, it was a pretty serious game, and uh, it left you feeling, like, drained a little after, like, a couple hours of playing. Like, sort of bad about yourself? No, I wouldn't say bad about yourself, but it's, like, it. the tone of, of Last of Us is very serious. And uh, it's fun, it's lighthearted, but they really pull you in to, to care about these characters and everything like that. So, you know, as they're going through their their trials, whatever happens, it's... it. It is uh, draining. So yeah, but it's post post apocalyptic, mm-hmm. and I love anything post apocalyptical. Who doesn't? And yeah, and it's so good. They did it so good. Just the way everything is growing around, uh, you know the the buildings and you know the monuments and everything of of the United States. And they did such a good job capturing that. Yeah. So the Left Behind DLC takes place. Uh, during a gap in the story of uh, The Last of Us, there's there's a little time jump at one point, and, mm-hmm. and this takes place during that time. And then it also takes place during uh, a flashback. And so okay. in the DLC, you play the character Ellie, mm-hmm. you know, who's also in the, the Last of Us game. Yeah. And uh, I just, I, it was really good. Mm-hmm. It was about two and a half three hours i got it yesterday and and beat it in about that time yeah 
And I'm always concerned about, you know, prequels or anything like that, whether they add value. And, mm-hmm. and this one just really enhances the the original, you know, The Last of Us. Yeah. Now, Last of Us is pretty much like they don't, they didn't make it as like a series of games. It was like one self-contained story, right? Uh, I, I think that remains to be seen. You know, I, there's like been talk about a sequel or, or something like that. But I hope that if they do a sequel, it is actually a completely different story following different characters. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I I would say for the most part, it feels like a, just a contained, self-contained story. Okay, because I heard that was part of the concern with the the DLC for it. it was like it was sort of done, and then to have DLC for it felt kind of strange. But apparently, they've done it very well. Yes, so. they did, and I would say you know I'm not the only one that feels this way. If you look at the reviews, it was like we were all nervous about this, but yeah. what they did just enhanced everything that went on in The Last of Us, uh, broadened your knowledge of Ellie as a character, and yeah. m- made you appreciate what she went through in the original so much more in the proper game. So, it, and, and I would say it's, it's, I kind of felt like that first season of Lost, when those flashbacks were really impactful, you know, and, mm-hmm. and were very revealing of the characters. To yeah. me, that's what it felt like. It was mm-hmm. it was not uh, little Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> you Thank know, it God. wasn't, oh, man, I know so much more about Darth Vader now. Yeah. More than I ever really wanted to know. Yeah. Nobody needs to know that stuff. <laughs> he, he said yippee <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said yippee. <laughs> As a kid, I do as an adult. <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> like in jest, or you you really mean? Yippee. I really mean it. I am just full of whimsy. <laughs> uh, one of the the things that I find interesting uh, about The Last of Us and just like noticing it in the DLC, mm-hmm. you know, there's trouble coming when you see a bunch of boxes of bullets strewn about. As well as health. <laughs> yeah. Boss battle. <laughs> you know, something is coming. Right. So that that was kind of fun. And, yeah. you know, it was it was just, it reminded me of how much I love The Last of Us. And that it will be a game that I have to play again at some point. Really? Yeah. Oh, another thing is uh, the transitions. I think they do a really good job with the transitions between, uh, you know, actual playing the game and cutscenes. Mm-hmm. For instance, there was a part where I was jumping off a ledge, mm-hmm. you know, and and I caused that jump to happen. And just as Ellie landed, it landed into a cutscene, which I thought was such a cool transition. Sure, you know, I was like, <sighs> for a second there, I felt like a dope because I was like, how did they know I was gonna do that? But that <laughs> speaks to like how the game kind of feels like an open world, but you're still, you know, you're not so much on rails, but Right. You know, you are drawn to a certain location. And I've yeah. heard different things about how they do that. They use light and subtle things to draw you to a certain area mm-hmm. in the world. And uh, it's really cool. And, awesome. and the other thing I was reminded about is uh, how big of a foul mouth <laughs> Ellie has <laughs> in the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's just like y- you get... You're you're playing Mario games and you're you're hearing the equivalent He's of He's not yip- a big Yippee <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh shit <laughs> You don't hear that stuff. Yeah. Not usually. <laughs> but uh Ellie has an extremely foul mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh it's a good game and definitely if you've played The Last of Us, you will love you will, I promise you. <laughs> you will love Left Behind starring Kirk Cameron. Um, one question though, you said you would definitely replay this, right? Yes. Is the story like, do you think just because you enjoy the gameplay or would it change if you played it a little differently? Um, your experience with it. I would say the experience is mostly 
the story. I think the gameplay is fun and it, you know, it's a good game. If you played any of the Uncharted games, you might be a little familiar, but it's better than that. I mean, it really okay. takes it to a whole new level. Um, yeah, there are different areas where, because there's a lot of stealth in the game, um, mm-hmm. or, but you can just go guns, guns a blazing. The sure. other thing is there's also just a ton of details in the game, little things that you can find and, uh, collectible items and stuff like that, that you yeah. can go off the beaten path and find. And I think that's really cool too. And that's another reason to play the game is because there's, it's such a rich world. Sure. And there's so many like uh, dead characters, I guess. Like, <laughs> you know, just like you'll walk by and see a dead body or something like that. But there's a yeah. story to that person that right. you can you can discover. So that's yeah. another reason to play the game over again. Awesome. The next thing I played was Super Mario 3D World. I've talked about this on the show again, but we're getting close to beating this game. <laughs> and uh, I, I really like it. It's a, it's a good game. It's a great platformer. And, you know, I just, I, I wish more people could have an opportunity to play this because it's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's a good blend between, say, you know, Mario 64 and the mm-hmm. 2D Mario games. It's, it's right. just like a perfect marriage of that. But uh, Brittany and I have been playing this, and we've gotten to the point we're at the last castle on mm-hmm. the last world. Yeah. And to be able to enter these, you have to have stars. Mm-hmm. We only have 100 stars, and we found out we need 130 to get in there. <laughs> yeah, so we got to ah. backtrack a little bit. Yeah. So that's that's where we're at in there, but we we've had a lot of fun with it, so... I remember you brought this up like it was in one of the first couple episodes, I think, and talking about some of these games turn into what you referred to as divorce mode (laughs) because uh, (laughs) it lends to a lot of arguing. Why aren't you moving? Yeah. What did you just do? I mean, there are moments like I wouldn't say we get angry with each other, but I'm like, what are you doing? Catch up with me. (laughs) You idiot. You know, stuff like that. (laughs) Very calm and collected. I've also been playing uh, a lot of Assassin's Creed 4 as well. Still rocking it. I'm still in Havana. (laughs) (laughs) You know? You're too afraid to leave. <laughs> well, I I haven't even gotten to what I think, you know, some people have said is the best part of the game is getting a pirate ship. Yeah. You know, and sailing the seven seas or whatever. <laughs> but I've just had a blast. You know, I, I've completed finding all the treasures. I've finished all of the assassinations. And I've had a lot of fun doing that. And uh, so I just want to get all that stuff done. And, you know, I bought myself some sweet swords. And mm-hmm. I bought myself a new revolver. Nice. And uh, it it's a good game. I really have enjoyed it. I found it kind of therapeutic. You know, it's something <laughs> that I'm just going to sit down and uh, run through the city of Havana for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just par 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 caring. <laughs> Excuse so, like... me. <laughs> Parkour. <laughs> have you? How many hours have you put into the Havana area? I don't know. I'm. I think. I I'm mean, a, I'm. I'm just curious. Like, I'd if you, say, like, if you can four? really sink a lot of time into that, like, I'd say like a good four hours, probably. Yeah. Into Havana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I've also the game lends itself to remote play so well. I've got a Vita, and you know, it, it's you know, particularly, particularly, I blah blah blah. blah, blah. Hey, <laughs> particularly. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, doing like the treasure finding and finding all those item things. Uh, it's yeah. really nice on the Vita. It looks great. It runs amazing. So I like that component as well. Yeah. And I haven't hated the main main quest stories yet. I mean, kind of <laughs> just like, eh, whatever. But yeah. I haven't. It's not like I hate it. Right. But Assassin's Creed 4 is really good. I have to recommend it. You know, uh, I'm gonna keep playing it for a while. It's it keeps bringing me back. Yeah. So and then last but not least, I've obviously been playing a ton of Hearthstone as well. Sure. Of course. I love Hearthstone. Oh. <laughs> Yippee! 
We we made a, a let's play video this week. So yes, we did. And good job on that video. It was a good explanation of the game and how to play. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it was fun. Although I did lose the game. That yeah. I was... <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I got him down to one health. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing that I thought was the coolest, though. Is you did show like how tight the game can be. It can go either yeah. way, and yeah. you know, you never know down to the last minute who's gonna win. Yeah. Just like, holy shit, can you stop popping up like two extra armor? Just like, <laughs> you can't get through his armor at the end. <laughs> How much did you play this week? Mm, not a ton, uh, but I got in, got in some good games. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you played some Hearthstone too, right? I'm assuming. I mean, yeah, you did the Let's Play. But... Duh. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what, el I, what I... else did you play? So Hearthstone, uh, I continued my, my re... Rediscovery, yeah, rediscovery of World of Warcraft, because I really feel like the more I play it now, it feels sort of like a different game. Like they really hold your hand a lot. Yeah. Like the the problem, like I I wanted to to look at the game like a couple years after not playing it and jumping straight into like some of my pre existing characters, like really difficult to sort of come to grips with all the updates and changes they did like way way down the line so you suddenly have to take in everything all at once uh so i wanted to go back and like start with the brand new character run through see how they like show you the ropes now and get you into the game yeah and so you're doing a lot of the hey go kill 10 of these yeah, bring exactly. me back their pelts <clears throat> yeah my favorite part <laughs> yeah and they they make it easier for you so i I don't think this would make it more enjoyable for you, but like <laughs> they uh they hold your hand a lot. A lot. Eh, what do I you mean? mean? Like uh, what do they hold your be, hand through? They would you'd get a quest and then they would say, like, go in this area, like to the east of town. So you would have to look at your map and say, Okay, that's east, I better go over that way and you'd have to look around and try and find the thing that you're that you have to do. But this it now changes it so there's like a big golden arrow pointing exactly where you need to go. See, I and like you that. And you can open up a map that shows exactly the point that you're supposed to go to. Sounds good to and me. And if you have to kill stuff, it shows like a blued area like on the map. It, Perfect. It shows the zone <laughs> where you have to go. I love I all mean, that stuff. Would you really like that? I, I did. I mean, I didn't like having to kill the stuff, but... Yeah, I I liked that aspect when I was playing. I was like, "All right, cool. I know right where I'm going, uh, but and what like, I need to as, do." As someone who like really enjoyed exploring the world, and like that was for me a big part of the entertainment value was like, "Oops, I didn't go to the right place. I got to keep like looking." And it wasn't like so like cryptic that you couldn't figure out where you're supposed to go, but it took a little bit of looking around. This, I feel like it's much more like, all right, just look at the mini map. Maybe they're they're saying, we want you to have more time for exploring, Aaron. How? We don't want you to have to mess around. You, you just go lost. straight to the quest, like finish it. Finish Done. the quest and then just go explore for a while. But it sort of lends itself to exploration if you don't. If exploration you're not shown exactly with where to frustration. Go. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, what well, which uh fable game was it where they put in the uh like paths like if you had to go on a quest it would show this golden trail oh exactly my gosh uh go. i don't know and maybe it was 3 or something i hated like fable so <laughs> <laughs> cuz you know why because it felt like offline world of warcraft <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense then. <laughs> <laughs> I do like, is it Peter Molyneux or something is his name? I like, yeah. for some reason, yeah. I just like hearing him talk. Yeah. Wouldn't it be Why? amazing if we make a video <laughs> game that, <laughs> that has a dog in it and you, you love your dog? <laughs> All right. Continue. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know. I'm sort of disappointed by like, how they've made it it seems like it's wow and like there's a difficulty slider and they've switched it to easy and so 
coming back into it, I just felt like a little disappointed that it's so like pointing you exactly like A, B, like here's exactly where you have to go. And I don't know, personally, I didn't care for it. All right, everybody, if you agree with Aaron, <laughs> email us at podcast <laughs> at uphshow.com. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> What do you think about the dumbing down of World of Warcraft? I don't know. I say streamline. I don't think streamline equals dumbing down. Not always. Do you want to fight? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> uh, all right. So that was wow. I just want to talk about it. All right. Probably. What else you play? Um, I also played A Wolf Among Us. Yay, finally. finally. Jeez Louise. Yeah. I know. I uh, dropped the 25 bones and picked up the five pack. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you I think? Mean, like, Did you play through any the first episode yet, or where are you? I'm, I think, maybe like a little over an hour into the first episode. And uh, it's fun. I like it much more than I thought I was going to. And what do you um, like it, about it? It really, much more than I was expecting, feels like an adventure game. Like, yeah yeah like surprisingly so um the the one thing i kind of wish they would have done is like everything that you're supposed to do is very clearly marked like click on this click on this like look at this pick this up. let me guess you wish they didn't hold your hand so much <laughs> yes i mean if you played like space quest like yeah the old adventure games like they didn't have little like blinking circles over like go over here hey look at that you can touch yeah. it yeah Hey, um, and it's not it. just like <laughs> you get in a certain range of things. It's usually like you can see everything in the scene that you're supposed to look <laughs> yeah. at. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's just a small thing I have with it. Overall, yeah. I think is really fun. I guess it's like the equivalent, though, in Space Quest, like if you had to type look, you know. Yeah. But then True. when they got to the more, the cursor interface, it was like yeah. you had to put the eyeball on all the stuff and see if it was. Yeah, you know, but yeah, it's uh, I can understand that. Yeah. It is kind of takes you out of like, you know, being in that world and stuff when an object is glowing at you. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about uh, the uh the dialogue selection stuff? Uh, it felt really fast. Like I got kind of yeah. Yeah. Like distressed when people would talk to me because I was like, oh God, I like <laughs> you have to make a decision and like it affects how they view you later yes. on. And so, that does like, have an impact on the game too, so it's cool. Okay. Uh like how much does that like will they just not deal with you later on? Stuff like that? Um Or is it just I, they'll open up like different dialogue options? It's a tree in the game, like because that stuff will yeah, it'll it'll impact how they treat you. Mm -hmm. There was something I did in the first episode uh, to a character and what ended up occurring later and the cut scenes and everything. You know, it opens up that tree of, yeah. you know, the cut scene instead. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, I I really liked it. Like, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to uh, playing through the rest of that and um what is it episode two yeah you should you should uh just guzzle that down super quick because <laughs> i'm i can't wait to hear what you think when you see like how everything plays out how the decisions you make impact the game further on that'll be really sweet yeah and i, I really like how they as somebody is talking about something uh it unlocks something in what do they call it the uh it's like your codex like all the characters like the comic the world. doesn't it say like an issue or something is that what you're talking about uh like when they say like the mondays and then like <laughs> if you if you open up your uh your book and it shows like it's sort of like an achievement but it's yeah. unlocking like yep. parts of the story and yeah so then you can like mouse over and click on and then get some like cool background so like if you want to look into that great if you want to ignore that then like it sort of opens up a cool uh, extra bit of the world to you. Yeah, I uh, I think it's a cool game. And then hopefully, too, you should play The Walking Dead because that one's just as good. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a good game. All 
All right, everyone, it's time for gaming news. We're just going to take a look at some of the stories of the week that we found interesting. And you know what, Aaron? It, it seems like every week we come back to this. It doesn't seem like it is ever. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but maybe it's all coming to a close. This could be yeah. the end. It looks like. We have been, vic we're victorious. <laughs> we have defeated the beast. <laughs> King Games has backed off on their what? file for trademark. That is crazy. Of the word candy. <laughs> I don't know about the word saga, <laughs> but of yeah, the word at least candy. they backed off. At least yeah. in the U.S. Because it looks like some of their uh, trademark filings in like Europe are still active. Okay, but uh, but at least it's a start. It is, and sort of. You know, it's it's just it's all about the power of the people and yeah. the power of the internet. We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to our listeners and everyone. Yeah. I don't know what we did, <laughs> but we did it. Our collective rage yes. stopped. Collective King. rage. Yeah. So uh, at first they they declined to comment to uh, yeah to any of the reporters, or the journalists, mm. but but then uh, they came back and did mention that uh you know that they were going to continue uh to pursue it in in Europe, but that they felt that just owning the game, the IP Candy Crusher, was enough. To protect their, mm -hmm. you know, their brand. Yeah, yeah. Well, good for you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they're finally, uh, I don't know, they probably haven't learned their lesson. They have been vanquished. <laughs> oh, they're going to learn their lesson. Except they're, no, they're not. Because no. they're, they've got so much money. They seem pretty predatory in terms of, like, their litigation practices yeah so yeah probably not the last we've heard of them but at least they're backing off on this yeah haha -ha. let's just <laughs> all laugh king. collectively yippee <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a laugh <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so next up then uh minecraft is gonna be a movie yay Maybe. we'll see yeah you know yeah. you never know what happens between pre-production and production a la yeah. unhappy campers <laughs> youtube.com forward slash unhappy campers movie there it is that's our movie <laughs> <laughs> so warner brothers is interested in making a minecraft movie and uh they've tapped on the shoulder of roy lee who produced mm -hmm. the lego movie and mm -hmm. uh so warner brothers owns the rights to the minecraft movie and they're yeah. looking into you know developing that getting it done capitalize on on some of that minecraft money yeah, well, seems like a pretty good collaboration. Uh, it sounds dumb to me. <laughs> I think it's going to be I a mean... dumb movie. <laughs> Video game movies are always great. Uh, you know, the, the Lego movie has been successful. and People mm -hmm. like it. But yeah. the Minecraft movie, I, I'm not big on... It, it's like Battleship. That, yeah. I think, is your perfect example. Battleship mm -hmm. was a game that didn't have any story mm -hmm. and then they developed a story around it. Now yeah. I, I do a super realize, good story. I do realize like I, those people that play Minecraft are so creative and they do a lot of really cool things on YouTube. Uh, yeah. and you know, they make stories out of it, mm -hmm. but I just don't trust Hollywood to really do a good job at that. <laughs> yeah. I don't trust you I mean, Hollywood. <laughs> Lego has a back catalog of a bunch of, uh, whether it's, you know, existing Star Wars stuff or whatever. I mean, they Lego's been around forever. So, like, they have a, a pretty good background to draw from. But Minecraft is just, you know, the construction. I mean, it's a great game, but, like, yeah, I, I don't know how you turn it into story. a movie. And then do you, like, get, <laughs> are, are they going to do the Minecraft graphics? Or are they going to get, like, human <laughs> actors? Right. Jason Statham stars in Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, you'd rather, I, I you'd rather Nate Fillion. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. I mean, are they just going to have people 
like live action swinging axes and like breaking up dirt blocks and <laughs> stuff like that. I can't wait till I get a mount. Hey, there's a horse. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, we'll see. Oh, by the way, tonight's Oscar night, I think. All right. Who cares? <laughs> Most movies are dumb. <laughs> Except for unhappy Most. campers. <laughs> YouTube.com. <laughs> All right, so next up, uh, this one. This is uh, pretty pretty interesting, I think. Uh, yeah. Nintendo, they're going to shut off the Wi-Fi you know, connection for Wii and DS, like mm -hmm. the, the multiplayer servers. Yeah. Online play will cease to exist. It will no oh. longer. And that's for Wii and DS. The eShops are still going to be open, but yeah. you, you won't be able to go on your Wii and play a little Mario Kart. Yeah. You just can't do it anymore. This seems a little premature to me. I mean, isn't the Wii still like... Aren't there a, still plenty of people using that instead of the Wii U? Yes! That's why. Like the <laughs> DS, I can kind of understand. Although, I disagree because they are still manufacturing DSs. And mm -hmm. I think... I thought I read in May... Uh, they'll start stop production of DS. The the Wi-Fi and everything, the online play will be shut off May 20 of this year. Okay. Yeah. And I believe they're also going to soon stop production of uh, Nintendo DS. Mm -hmm. That's been around forever. You know, that's been a it long has. time. So that I can kind of understand. And yeah. they probably have numbers and they're like, oh, look, you know, people don't really use their DS for online play. Right. But I would I mean, think is it that the Wii was them more. That much? Eh, yeah. I don't know. Server and bandwidth. I don't know. But they can yeah. they can uh, you know reappropriate or whatever the the bandwidth to something else, which is you know yeah. which is what I assume they would do. But the Wii just seems. How long has the Wii been out? Maybe seven years, eight years, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seven yeah. maybe. So it, it's just like, to me, it, it's like Xbox at this point saying, we're going to, we're going to turn the 360 off. Yeah. You know, Which I could, I could see like them stopping support for GameCube online play. <laughs> I know that doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> Actually, I think they did have a modem for it. Did they? Yeah. I think maybe like Fantasy Star. There's uh -huh. a fantasy star play game that you could play online, and it was like that. That was it. So hold oh, back on your way, emails. <laughs> the the Wii was released in 2006. 2006. Yeah. So, it's been a while. But not long enough to shut everything off. But maybe no. they have access to data that I don't. But I thought, like, you know, you look at uh, Mario Kart for the Wii, and it's still uh, 40 bucks to buy. You know, right, it's it's crazy. So I gotta imagine. So, I mean, they're really bad about their online sales, like in terms of. You know what they're really bad bad about? Online period. <laughs> Friend codes. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> yeah. I never even tried that much with like my 3ds or anything like that. I I didn't either. I have a uh, Mario Kart on my 3ds. Yeah. And uh, I haven't tried the online, but I heard the online at one time was at least hopping. You know, it was like the place to be. Right. So, What's the, the biggest thing is that Street Pass? Street Pass is cool. Yeah. That I do. Yeah. I do like me some Street Passing. <laughs> like passing people on the street. It was like so cool uh, walking through an airport and then opening up mm -hmm. your DS and like all these people and then they can help you with your mini games and all that stuff. And then yeah, that's pretty cool. I was sitting, uh, I, I got to my seat mm -hmm. and I was sitting next to a gentleman and he was Japanese, didn't speak English. And we communicated via our three DSs. We were like, we, the only words that we both knew were, yeah. were Mario, <laughs> Nintendo. Yeah. <laughs> and he was playing, uh, Animal Crossing. Oh. He started playing that. Nice. 
I had the 3DS XL. He only had the regular <laughs> 3D. I was like, <laughs> you're like, idiot. <laughs> What's with that toy? <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Next up on the list, Sony is going through a little bit of restructuring mm-hmm. and uh, of their electronics division. So they're going to close 20 Sony stores across the U.S. It's going to impact about a thousand employees and they'll reduce staff down to a third by the end of this year. What is up with that? I weren't, didn't Sony like get rid of their, I don't know if they got rid of it, the television department, like manufacturing TVs. I don't know, but Um, didn't they sell Sony Vio as well? Like the Vio computer and all that jazz. I mean, they're definitely not doing so great in their electronics areas. So, but PlayStation is doing really well. Right. But they don't, that's a different division, isn't they it? They don't need a store. To sell <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't, I, needing a brick and mortar store at this point, Yeah, it's it's getting harder and harder, you know? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know. They don't have the same appeal as like an Apple store where it's this experience to go into the place. Yeah. I mean, the Sony store is just another electronic store. It's not that great. I've never been into a Sony store. Just a bunch of headphones and like TVs. While we're on the topic of, well, yeah, you know, it's too bad for those employees and everything that yeah. are going to be out of jobs. But yeah. while we're on the topic, on to something more important. What's that? Where the flip <laughs> is the PlayStation camera? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. It's been <laughs> out of stock and they're like selling for a hundred bucks now. Like if you want to get one on eBay. They are in what do you want to do with shortage? Uh, I want to do. Um... <laughs> I <was> gonna... <laughs> don't I, don't. I don't. Whatever you were maybe gonna I just, say. Maybe I just want. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want it's all. <laughs> no, actually, I want to do Twitch streaming with it. Okay, that'd be cool. So it's really cool. Uh, you, it like takes. You know, you're in the corner and all that stuff, and you're playing a game, and like one person will watch you for about ten seconds, <laughs> then they <Yeah>. leave. <laughs> <laughs> Hooray! And that's why Sorry, I want yippee. them to see my picture. But I, I feel like I've been able to get people to go to my stream, but uh-huh. when you're not interacting with them at all, like when there isn't yeah. a person there, person talking and interacting, yeah, that I think is the one of the key components of a good Twitch stream. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Not just silence. That. But yeah. the thing is about the camera is I've you know you can't get a straight answer uh why the camera is you know you can't be found. It can't be found in any store. And yeah. I went into a GameStop mm-hmm. because I was at my wits end. I just had to find a PlayStation camera and so I yeah. stepped into a GameStop. Yeah. I don't usually when is the last time you were no, oh, like a couple months before that. <laughs> <laughs> I try to sound like I'm all too hip for that, but <laughs> I'm in there daily. And that guy was like, "Yo, um, the reason that they don't have the PlayStation camera here, I mean, they're all at the warehouse. They're just sitting there. We've been asking Sony, when are we gonna get some PlayStation cameras?" They're all just sitting there. It's all because of like a security concern. Like somebody can hack your camera and then watch you. Wouldn't that be the same for every web camera on the planet? (laughs) So that was his thing. I heard heard someone else say, um, because there's been a lot of issues with like pornography with the PlayStation camera. Like some Russian couple or something. Like, you know, they have these games, the playroom. And yeah. all these little robots and stuff. And you can watch people do that. That's what yeah. that experience is. Well, they were in the playroom playing a different playing. time. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to live stream of me and wife as we <laughs> fornicate on couch. <laughs> <laughs> so that was another rumor why the PlayStation camera remains to be found anywhere. So, right. I don't know what's going like- on with it. That's weird. Yeah. And then uh, last on our story list, Steam Family Sharing is out of beta. It's out there live to everybody. Finally. Yeah. 
I I like this. Uh, you and I have talked about it. it it's not what yeah. we were hoping it was going to be. It, yeah. it isn't digital lending in, yeah. in the sense that we want it to be, where I can be like, hey, Aaron, I'm not going to be playing this game, and you want to try it. I'm going to lend you my key Yeah, that you can download it on your computer and play it for a limited time or whatever, like a demo or whatevs. Man, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, that would. This, I would and, pay for that service. Yeah, me too. And it seems like this... There's a, there's a lot of misinformation about what this is. A lot of people that haven't done it or used it. Yeah. I have used it. I do use it. Yeah. I do like it and appreciate it for what it is, but it's for people that share a computer. Yeah. They can share their games with other members of the family mm-hmm. or, or whatever. And I, I think it's yeah. cool. It's a good thing. Yeah, it is cool. Mm-hmm. So... um. Yeah, but it's out of beta, and so now everyone can do it. All right, everybody, it's time for the retro game of the week. Hey, you want to go retro? Because it's cool to go retro. Yeah. Apparently. You know, I, I have fond memories of this retro game of the week. Super Dodgeball for the NES. Nice. I think it also came out for the maybe the Game Boy Advance or something. After that, one of those. Yeah. Uh, there was a remake of it. But Super Dodgeball, it, it's Dodgeball. And it is not mm-hmm. for the Super NES. I know that they they always put like Super in front of the games. Right. So this one it's, is not. it's also not Dodgeball U because <laughs> they label a U on the end of all their games. It's not Like university. Yeah, I know. That's what I was like, <laughs> me university. What am I going to learn here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mario's going to give me a diploma. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Super Dodgeball. I used to go to, well, it's a dodgeball game and there's like, uh, it's no hold bar dodgeball and there's seven people on a team and you're throwing the ball, trying to knock people out. But yeah. the crazy thing is, if you're out, you're not just out like you walk out of the game. You're dead. <laughs> you die. Yes. <laughs> you literally turn into an angel and float away. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it is crazy. It is scary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I really enjoy it. I used to run it all the time. I'd walk down to a convenience store Called... What was the name of that place? <laughs> the, the name of that place was the Mighty Midget. And I'm not going to say <laughs> was. It is the Mighty Midget. It still exists. I still go down there uh, if I'm in town and I need some candy or something. Yeah. Some candy or pop. Yeah. Uh, it like There was a certain age I ended up having to be before my parents would let me go to this store. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a great age to be? Yeah. <laughs> Once you hit that point where yes. your parents are like, go ahead. <laughs> yes. It's because they had pornography. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of a seedy place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like out in the open, but it was just yeah. like, you know, it's one of those places like, uh, it's seedy. Go behind the curtain. So there might be some seedy people. What? Yeah. What do you mean go behind the curtain? <laughs> like where it says 18 and older. <laughs> Oh, our movie store had like, cowboy swinging doors they had oh. to go into. <laughs> and uh, whenever I'd walk out of it with a porno, I'd go, <laughs> <laughs> I'd go, wee, 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 <laughs> and then shoot the gun at somebody and yeah. wink. <laughs> I'm just kidding. so why why was midget even in the name because it it used to be okay to be the mighty midget it used to be okay for them munchkins and midgets that was okay to say and it's not anymore so i'm not sure why they haven't changed their name to the mighty little person yeah actually i am sure it doesn't sound as good (laughs) So I really loved Super Dodgeball. I thought that was a fun game. Uh, yeah. All your characters, you know, some they had different powers and stuff too, and it, mm-hmm. it was pretty cool. You can do super throws and knock people out. I miss Dodgeball playing as just a regular game. I, I haven't played that in a while, and mm-hmm. you know, I uh, I I just I think fondly of this game. 
it's it's but good. this is it's not like a one hit and you're out it's like uh the care the the players have health meters right? yes yes they do they have health players they have health players they have health yes the players have <laughs> healthy health. players yes yeah. mighty midget everybody <laughs> in allegan michigan <laughs> Pick up some crystal meth while you're at it, because we've got a lot of that there, too. <laughs> Free plug. All right, everybody. It's time for this week's giveaway. And mm-hmm. I really like this game. It's a good game to give away. And it's underappreciated, yep. me thinks. It's The Cave. <laughs> Double yeah. Finds The Cave. It's a good game. It's a puzzle platform adventure game. So uh, I really like it. It's about... You know, these people, you play, you choose three characters and they all have unique abilities. Like there's a knight, there's a scientist, there's creepy twins, uh, there's like a monk, and they all have different special abilities. And you choose them and you go into a magical talking cave. Mm -hmm. And it's like a- The cave talks? Yes, the cave talks to you. The cave is the narrator of the game. Okay. And it's hilarious. (laughs) I really like it. I like uh, the puzzles and stuff. I think it's got great humor, and it, it's underappreciated. It, it's a good game. The there's like a bunch of different like the the cave is broken up into different sections. Like there's one part of the the world that is just like a carnival. Yeah, and it's really cool. And it's yeah. neat because you can only access certain parts of the cave if you play a certain character. So you can only fully explore the cave. If you play all characters, which I think is cool, but there's a lot of different objects and you switch between the three characters to, uh, time different things and make, um, the puzzles complete the puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to win a copy of the cave, Mm -hmm. what do they got to do? Well, we're going to tweet a message about our giveaway and then you just reply to that tweet. You know, super easy. it, It would be great if you followed us. I'd love that. I'd appreciate that. Please do. We we want more followers. Yeah. We just do. <laughs> All right, we that's it. That's them. our giveaway. So <laughs> Yeah, good luck. It's time for random stuff. Mhm. Aaron. Yeah. I like eggs. So do I. From my head down to my legs. I like <laughs> eggs. <laughs> I li- I particularly good. like fried <laughs> eggs. Um Maybe two times a week, I'll have a couple of fried eggs for breakfast, you know, and some how, toast. How do you fry these? Are these over hard? I'm uh, I'm an over medium guy. Okay. You know, I like uh, the whites to be done. Sure. I was thinking, I was eating my eggs, and I, I started thinking, in all my time that I've been living on this world mm-hmm. and watching other people eat eggs, mm-hmm. everybody does it a little different. And you can really tell. A lot about a person by the way they eat their eggs. How Not so? so much scrambled eggs, because, you know, <laughs> scrambled Just eggs grab a fork and count. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, or, you know, I guess sometimes I've made like a scrambled egg sandwich, and that's pretty good. Yeah, super good. But there are these different types of people, the way they eat their eggs. Uh, like, I used to be uh, a poke the yolk <laughs> with my toast kind of guy. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to like take that. There's that little bit of white skin over that layer of lo- yolk. You, you don't have to describe it. <laughs> and I'd poke it with the, you know, I'd just kind of puncture it with uh-huh. the corner of my toast and sure. get that yolk a flowing. That, yeah. You know, just a river yeah. of yolk starts shooting out of the egg and into my <laughs> eye. <laughs> ah, I got yolk in my eye. <laughs> so they're high pressure eggs. <laughs> <laughs> So that was how I used to do it. And then I dip. Yeah. I dip until I got all the yolk, you know, with the uh, the one half a toast. And then the yeah. rest of the egg would go on to the other half a toast and I'd eat that. Mm-hmm. So that that's one way. Now I've turned into a guy that just puts his fried eggs on top of his toast. I'm just yeah. hey, I just no fussing around. I just want to eat. I don't my have eggs. time for this. And I yeah. just I fork them, you know? Yeah. Just just eat it fork. I'll I'll break up the yolk with my fork and then, uh-huh. you know, that way. Then there are yeah. some other guys that just like, you know, they don't eat it with the egg on top of the yolk toast mm-hmm. method. They just yeah. poke it with their fork yeah, and then they start eating it. Yeah. And it just seems like there's, you know, 
there's a lot to be said about a person, whether it's how much time they have in their day mm -hmm. based on how they eat their eggs. Do you agree with me? How do you eat your eggs? What, I mean, what do you think it says about you? I'm, I'm a, a no fuss, no muss kind of guy right now, I think. Sure. You know? Do, does it leave a lot of mess on the plate when you're done? Like a lot of egg residue? No. No, it doesn't. No. No, yeah. I I, uh, I just I want to eat my eggs, enjoy the flavor. I don't want to fuss about the way I eat them. I used to like mm -hmm. to fuss. Yeah. I used to just enjoy. You liked it, you know. I was like, it was all about how I ate my eggs, and I was like, look, everybody, look at me, <laughs> look at the way I'm eating my eggs. <laughs> look how high class I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dipping them and all that stuff. And it's just not that way anymore. Oh, yeah. Well, my my uh, my preferred method is usually over medium, over easy. And I'll like cut everything up, not poke the yolk, but I'll just cut it up into different bite-sized pieces. Perfect and then portions the, the too. Yolk, I'm guessing. Yeah, like just yeah. Like, I down measure this line. it with a tape measure, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the yolk will run out on the plate, and so I'll Ew. like. You have to make it sound so gross. <laughs> uh, you take the, the piece of toast and you sort of mop it up. You mop up a little bit of the yolk goo. Like <laughs> and then you also mm. like take a bite with just like uh, one of the pieces of the white. And so I just go that route until it's done. Now, I'm sorry. Did you say you have toast though? Yeah, with toast. Because there are some freaks that just eat a, <laughs> an egg without a piece of toast. They're just like, I love runny, runny eggs and... It's weird. You need With that. With nothing like, else on your plate. Yeah. You need that toast to absorb the liquid. Yeah. Yeah. Something. All right. That's that's all. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. Just like eggs. <laughs> How about you? Fair enough. Uh, my thing is, I think this is sort of amazing. And I wish that more places had it. And it's music when you walk into a room. Is that because you're like really loud in the bathroom and you don't want anybody to hear you or you're... Or you're just kind of bashful. To drown out. No, I I mean it makes you feel important when you oh. walk in the room, and music starts playing. Does the music cue like the moment you walk into the room? Yeah, it like it's a maybe three second fade in to some like some classical music. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I would so, really like that. That is not where I thought you were going with this. I thought you just enjoyed you <laughs> the calming pleasures of music in the bathroom. But it's no. like you it you are very important when you walk into this bathroom. It's yeah. like rolling out the red carpet music yeah. style. Yeah. Welcome to the urinal. In fact, please. I think there should pull also a be a red carpet. No, that would be the <laughs> grossest carpet ever. <laughs> oh, God, no. Please no you when can't there are take little kids in the evening. Anything into a men's bathroom with you. <laughs> no. Uh but <laughs> I, I really love it at our school. It's this automated thing, like a motion detector. So when you walk in, it immediately starts like piping in this classical. I'm just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> Doves start flying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it makes your bathroom trips all that much more enjoyable. <laughs> Here's your magazine, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would be nice if more places, you walk in and there's music. I agree. Now where I work, uh, the music is just playing all the time. No. And oh my gosh, if <laughs> I hear the Indigo Girls closer I am to find one more time, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to lose it. Yeah. Closer I am to find. <laughs> no. <laughs> You just ruined one of the most important parts of my day. <laughs> oh man! What, I wish what could I had they play that would make it a little bit a little bit better. Well, you know what would be the best thing is if I walk in, fade in, yeah. to my theme song. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, it's Genesis. Uh, that's right. Same that's old right. song. I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah. That would be. <laughs> but yeah enhance that genesis is in the bathroom playing <laughs> <laughs> what up phil what up hey, phil collins hey, 
You know what I like? Do oh, it. Phil Collins isn't Genesis. Peter Gabriel is the real <laughs> Gen. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I know you're thinking that, Aaron. <laughs> what? You're so dumb. <laughs> Whoa. So uh... <laughs> on that note, I uh, I think more bathrooms and rooms should have music playing when you walk in. <laughs> I agree. It's time for the question of the week, everybody. <laughs> so what games have you beaten multiple times this is a game that you've beaten and you come back to it and play we kind of talked about that i get that urge with the last of us yeah Uh, i i think it's such a great experience i want to experience it again and so how about you are there any games that you've uh, beaten that you go back and play it again uh one that we talked about last week when i had my week of blizzard love uh, diablo i played (laughs) diablo 3 i played through Probably five or six times. Holy crap! Yeah. How uh, how long does it take to beat that? Not that long. I mean, maybe four or five hours. Oh, eh, maybe that's longer not too bad. That. But it's it's not so long that it's like you got to play it for a couple weeks to beat it. I mean, it's oh, fairly okay. short, especially right. when you know what you're doing. So I I got to be getting pretty close to the end of that then. Yeah. Because I think that's about as much time as I put into it. What level? No, I don't. It's been probably a month and a couple months since I've gotten in. So, yeah. yeah. Um, what about I, you? I would say like a lot of the Mario platformers, I've definitely like beaten and gone back and played again. Like nostalgia sure. really comes in there. Yeah. Uh, Especially the original Mario. I've beaten that well, one. that's been like yeah, that's like a hundred times. Like oh yeah, <laughs> this time I'm gonna do it without dying. This time I'm gonna do it without jumping. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yep. There was somebody that recently just did it. Uh, they just beat Mario with the lowest score possible. What is that? Five hundred points. The lowest score. They beat the oh. entire game and only scored five hundred points. And you cannot score lower than five hundred. <laughs> So that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of any others that I've really have gone back and played twice and beaten. Yeah. Though, you know, just other than those. Hmm. I think especially as kids, like, we're not the ones buying our games. So when we've got a game and you play through it, like, well, I'll do that again. Yeah. And again and again and again. Well, Aaron, that brings us to... The end of another episode. It's unbelievable. It goes. We it's unbelievable. It. Power hour. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd like to thank everybody for listening, and it's it's time for our closers and plugs. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot. All right, uh, number one. If you want to answer the question of the week, which is what games have you beaten multiple times, please email us at podcast at uphshow.com. We're on Twitter, and our Twitter handle is at uphshow. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash UPH show. Please subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher. We really appreciate it. We're on there. Review us if you if you don't mind and rate us. We'd appreciate yeah. it. Subscribe. Yes. iTunes, Stitcher. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, you can find us on Steam. Okay, we have a Steam group, Unbelievable Power Hour. And I'm on Twitter as well, at DanDehan78. Follow me. I'm working on my website. That should be done. I've been saying that for weeks and weeks, but it's not done yet. <laughs> it's coming up. <laughs> uh, next, you can check out my website, which actually is up. Uh, AaronWiesinger.com. <laughs> and like we said earlier, you can watch our movie. We made a movie. It's a horror movie, 80s yep. slasher, campy, fun movie. It's called Unhappy Campers. Find it at YouTube.com forward slash Unhappy Campers movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right, everybody. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye now. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>